<laughs> I like this one. This image is just big snake. I wonder what I would write that poem about. Oh my goodness! <laughs> write a big snake poem. Hey everybody, today I wanted to jump back into the writing world and write a blank verse poem, sort of as a creative exercise because it's been a hot minute since I've written any poetry. Blank verse poetry is always the one that I turn to whenever I'm feeling stuck or when I feel like I just like can't write anything or when I don't have any ideas because there's something about the rhythm of the poetry that allows your brain to start thinking other new thoughts because you were busy focusing on the meter itself. I don't intend to get anything super polished by the end of it because that takes a lot of time and a lot of effort and uh well I mean it's just hard it's hard work to do that. It's been a long time since I've truly just like sat down and tried to like hammer out a little bit of metrical poetry. I'm so excited to jump right into this so let's get started. So I just have some scrap paper but I wanted to talk a little bit about what blank verse poetry is before we just dive right into it because I thought you might not be super familiar. A blank verse poem is unrhyming iambic pentameter of any length. So that just means that it is five feet of iams in a line. Um, an iamb is a metrical foot that is one unstressed syllable and then a stressed syllable. And this is just how I notate them. I think sometimes people do some little curvy things for unstressed, but I just do X's and little dashes. And that's unstressed and stressed. And so an I am sounds like da dum, da dum. And the dum is the stressed half of the foot. So iambic pentameter, pentameter means five feet. We just need four more feet to make our line. Uh, and this could be anything because we don't have to think about rhyming. So we can really write whatever we want here. So I'm gonna say the cow, you see da dum, the cow uh, has jumped, has jumped. What if we do a cross, a cross, the cow has jumped across the flower field. And so on this one, this word is actually in two different feet of the line and that's fine, that's totally cool, good job. So this says the cow has jumped across the flower field, but if we really exaggerate those feet, it says the cow has jumped across the flower field. And that's a line of iambic pentameter, right on. I thought I would show also um, an example of a blink verse poem that already exists and is published and is a thing. I printed out this George Eliot poem from the Poetry Foundation website, so I hope that I'm allowed to show it in this because I don't really know the rules on that. But this one is called In a London Drawing Room. Uh, and like I said, it's a George Eliot poem. I thought I would read a few lines just to sort of see how it sounds and then we can go over some of the meter of it. In a London Drawing Room. The sky is cloudy, yellowed by the smoke. For view, there are the houses opposite, cutting the sky with one long line of wall like solid fog, far as the eye can stretch monotony of surface and of form, without a break to hang a guess upon." So when you hear that just read aloud, it doesn't sound the way that our other iambic pentameter sounded. Da-dum, da-dum, da-dum. That would be really irritating to listen to, I think. Um, when you read poetry, you want to read it as naturally as you can uh, to, to stop at the end of the line or, or to really emphasize those syllables probably isn't the way that it's meant to be read. Um, but underneath it, you get this really pleasant sounding poem because iambic pentameter is so familiar to our ears. You, you might even think about the ways that I am sounds sort of like a heartbeat. Da dum, da dum, da dum. It's so natural that, that this form of poetry is, is something that could be used for anything because it's just something that we are so accustomed to hearing. But, but let's look at some of the, the actual meter of it because this one you can exaggerate. You can hear those IMs super clearly if you exaggerate it a little bit. So we'll mark it out as we go, okay? It says, the sky is cloudy yellowed by the smoke. That sounds way different than our silly little line about the cow, right? We have lots of those words that are cut in between feet. 
So we, we've got the sky, that's one foot. Is cloud is another foot. And then D yell. <laughs> the sky is cloud, D yell. Load, ode is one syllable. And then by is the stressed syllable of that foot. And then the smoke is our last one. So that's one, two, three, four, five. The sky is cloudy, yellow, load by the smoke. Or the sky is cloudy, yellowed by the smoke. And it's so ingrained into the line that you hear the rhythm, but it's not so exaggerated that it's excruciating to listen to. This whole poem is iambic pentameter. For sake of um, the planet, I'm going to use the back of this to write our ideas on so that we can work on our poem. I feel kind of like I want to write a poem that's uh, real moody. So for me, um, writing poetry is all about images. I love writing lyrical poetry that is uh, super image heavy. I thought we would start off, this is usually just kind of how I start off with poems in general. Um, by thinking of an image and just sort of like rolling with it. So I actually came up with a few ideas uh, that I thought could be kind of interesting to write about if we expanded upon them. So I'm gonna write them down and then we're actually just gonna pick one at random. And I wanted all of these to be really visceral. I think it's important for poetry to deal with concrete things more than abstract things. So even if this exact image doesn't end up in the poem itself, at least we have a really good starting place. <laughs> I like this one. This image is just big snake. I wonder what I would write that poem about. Let's do eight ideas. So here are the ideas for this poem. We're just gonna choose one and then build off of that. So we've got a castle turret in snow, a lake at sunset, an overgrown tomb, a pirate, oh, I meant to say a pirate ship at sea, but a pirate at sea works too. Maybe we'll write about a pirate. Um, two blood-stained arrows, a big snake, a really scratched vinyl, and a massive bonfire. And so I'm actually just gonna cut these up. gonna keep it called Big Snake. I'm gonna tell you a secret and it's that you should always write your poetry in pencil if you're gonna write it out because inevitably you will need to make changes. So what I'm gonna do is just write out um, my actual lines of iambic pentameter so that I have the form right in front of me and then my brain doesn't have to think about it. Let's do, how many lines do we want to do? Let's go for eight eight lines right now. One, two, three, four. Oops, that last one's skinny. Okay, we'll do better next time. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll do seven. Hmm, seven sounds great. Let's do seven lines of iambic pentameter. <laughs> Oops. I ran out of room. Okay, we want to do something about a big snake. So when I think about big snake, I think about the jungle. The jungle definitely has big snakes. And I think about how um, jungles are 
foggy. They're mysterious. Swampy, maybe? I actually don't know that much about jungles. Um, <laughs> this is not a nature channel. Um, I think about overgrown foliage. Kind of dangerous, like a really spooky jungle. Um, may maybe there's magic involved in, in this big snake story. I, th I think danger is good because poison? Snakes are, are they bite, they have those fangs and they get you. So let's do something that's like water. We've got snakes. Uh, maybe magic, maybe poison, definitely a woman, um, maybe a woman who, who does things that she's not supposed to, you know, maybe a woman who's like kind of an outcast. What if we do around the bend, around, around, <laughs> I have to kind of count the syllables, around the bend, around the bend, a moat defends her her gates. Uh, let's try that gate or gates. Her, let's try some one singular gate to start with. Around the bend, a moat defend her gates. Okay, see what I mean? See, you gotta erase. You don't. You, you ain't know what you're doing. You gotta erase. What if we do against? Ooh, maybe the snake is bad. Maybe she doesn't have a snake. Maybe the snake is out there and he's dangerous. Ooh, wait. Okay. Hold up, I got a thought cooking. What if we do the gate? Around the bend, a moat defends the gate against the night. And her monster. Mm, shoot. So this is one of the issues that you run into that I think it's it's fun because it's like a puzzle. When you're doing metrical poetry and you know you have an idea for something, like a word or a phrase, but it doesn't quite fit in the actual scheme of the poem. So you have two options. You can either try to rework it and find a way to fit that in to make it work or you can make substitutions but not today today we are not making substitutions um just for sake of ease because i think the substitutions actually make it harder to write poetry sometimes so that's just my two cents when you think of silverbacks don't you think of gorilla i was gonna say silverbacked something but i that kind of makes me think of gorillas are there silverbacked snakes do 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 backing up Backing up, backing up. Okay, so the first two lines here say, Around the bend, a moat defends her gate against the night. She comes with silver scales. I'm thinking that night is a girl. <laughs> that's, that's my current thought, is that night is a woman, and she has a snake, and that night, night has a snake friend, and maybe the snake is the stars. Listen, folks, this is all very much in the nebulous stage here. <laughs> We're gonna just try our best. Around the bend, a moat defends her gate against the night. It defends the gate, just a gate, any gate, against the night. She comes with silver scales, unraveling, unra unraveling. What is it called when snakes, are they molting? M molting, is that a word? M-O-L-T-I-N-G? Unraveling. Unraveling, 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 da dum da dum. Okay, I had a thought. I have a thought. And when she molts, I, is molts a word? Okay, Google. When she molts her skin, renewed. <sighs> okay. You wonder who she was before. Okay, let's make sure that works. She, okay. Unraveling and when she molts, comma, her skin re, oh, her skin, that's why. Renewed, you'll wonder who she was before. So now I'm thinking we have three lines left. We probably need some sort of turn. This is a very short poem for the record. I would probably write a blank verse poem at like 15 lines. I just wanted to kind of get my, you know, creative juices going. So this is really short, but I do want to try to include some sort of turn. Obviously we've got a little bit of ambiguity here where it's kind of unclear if she is also the knight. Um, I'm thinking the turn might be some sort of maybe maybe like a 
truly something as easy as like a time thing like poof poof now it's morning that's your turn hello um good poetry needs a reason for being told and uh some sort of turn because otherwise there's no element of surprise there's no uh conflict you know you sort of need you need those and and so i'm going to try to think of something that we can add in these last 15 feet that kind of give this a little oomph let's see ooh 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 my little brain is just what if they have a little smoochie? She tastes like something. My first thoughts are like, she tastes like, I wanna use juniper, <laughs> but, but that's like kind of a weird word to throw in here in a poem about night snakes. I also, also was thinking like moonlight, but that's so abstract. Moonlight doesn't taste, no taste, no taste. Moonlight does not taste like anything. You can't taste like moonlight because it doesn't have a taste. Juniper is something you can actually taste, but because I've never had gin, I don't know what it tastes like. <laughs> but this woman, surely, let's try it. She tastes like juniper. And then I'm thinking a comma and the word she's. Blah, 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 it's all part of the puzzle. Am I right, folks? Am I right, folks? The gate is a weird foot there, but that's fine. I will admit that I'm not paying a lot of attention to the line breaks at this point of the drafting process. That's something to keep in mind in revision. Um, for the sake of this video, I do just kind of want to get a few lines of metered poetry on the page. We're going to have something very unpolished by the time we finished. Um, I think that this is still important to do. This is a good exercise for just getting started if you're unfamiliar with metered poetry or if you just feel like you don't know what to write and that's kind of where I've been. So, so, so there's a lot more that goes into it than just the meter itself, um, but that's for another day. Okay, we'll try it, we'll try it. Okay, because juniper makes gin, so I'll say she tastes like juniper and you are drunk. What if you're not, what if you're drunk on hope? That's kind of corny, but it'll work for now. I'm gonna write this line first. Tomorrow fuel. To a new, we're gonna, we're gonna try that. that I'll admit that this got a little corny, uh, but so we're gonna pretend like this line doesn't exist and this is just its own. Whatever this is, it's gonna end on a period because this is a new sentence that says, tomorrow you'll wake up and to, what does it say? <laughs> this one says, tomorrow you'll wake up to a new sun. And I think that this is sort of where I've kind of crammed in a little turn here at the end just to sort of get one in. Um, it's not perfect, but it, you know, kind of works. Um, Let's say, okay, so she tastes like juniper and you are drunk on hope and promises of something. Ooh, on hope, ooh, okay. Promises of something. Okay, mm -hmm. wow, look at that. We have seven <laughs> lines of iambic pentameter. So let's read through this. Around the bend, a moat defends the gate against the night. She comes the silver scales unraveling, and when she molts her skin renewed, you'll wonder who she was before. She tastes like juniper, and you are drunk on hope and promises of something more. Tomorrow, you'll wake up to a new sun. I wish I had more room on the page because I feel like there definitely needs to be more after that, but that is good enough for now. <laughs> That's a poem. That's a poem.